career highs in points and rebounds. Murphy had 16, including four threes. Jim Beheim thinks this team will shoot the ball better. They had chances to score in that game, but lost 81-58. They're shooting it better, particularly his son, Buddy, who was tremendous yesterday, 27 points in their easy win against NC State. We're underway. Virginia in white controlled the tip. Burt Smith, Jamie Lucky, Tony Henderson are the officials. Clark, the diminutive point guard, and Murphy threw it behind him, but rescued by Sam Hauser. First team all conference player and certainly was a strong candidate for player of the year in the ACC. Murphy off the mark. Trey Murphy's a transfer from Rice. All those big guys are 40% plus from three point range. And it's odd to see the best shooters on your team actually in the front court, but that's been the case for Virginia this season. Quincy Garrier couldn't handle the pass, did well to poke it back to Bayheim. We thought about the very deep three. Joe Girard down the lane, missed the one-handed runner, and Marek Dolajai kept it alive for him. Bayheim over the freshman, Reese Beekman, for the first bucket of the game. And, Sean, I'm looking forward to seeing if Buddy tries to utilize that more in this game, using his size advantage over Beekman or Kihei Clark, whoever is guarding him on the perimeter. And Beheim 6'6", Beekman is 6'3". Clark's under six feet tall. Joe Girard, Jim Beheim, encouraged by Girard's play yesterday, felt he played with a lot more confidence than he had been in the late regular season. Dolajai scores, floated one high over the outstanding shot blocker, Jay Huff. A nice find by Buddy Beheim, recognizing that he's going to get a lot of attention from Virginia's defense, knowing where his teammates are going to be able to help them on the offensive end of the floor. Hauser with Gerard up on him. Almost every three-point attempt he had in Charlottesville in late January against Syracuse was uncontested. Bayheim off the curl, a three. Buddy Bayheim, averaging 22 a game over the last six, picks up right where he left off yesterday. And one of the questions always asked, especially in the ACC tournament, is there an advantage to having to play the day before Virginia having played in five days, Syracuse playing yesterday, shaking off some of the rust, and we know they shot it extremely well in this building. Virginia's last game Saturday, a win at Louisville, which clinched them the regular season title. And the number one seed for the fifth time in the last eight years. Nice move by Trey Murphy, the 6'9 junior from Durham, North Carolina. We've seen Trey Murphy do a lot more of that as the season's gone along, attacking the basket, not making Kia Clark the only playmaker on the floor. Bigman, the freshman guarding Bayheim. Defense considered his strength, and there's Huff to block it. Second all-time in block shots at Virginia behind only the great Ralph Sampson, and no one's ever going to catch Ralph Sampson. That's block 157 for Huff. Ralph had 462. You may as well say that Jay Huff is number one because Ralph does not count in any, <laughs> in any way, form, or fashion. Hauser tentative pass got picked off by Gerard. Beheim thought about ripping the three in transition. Dolajai screening for Gerard, but Clark, as usual, gets right back in defensive position. You said yesterday, Corey, you thought Clark should have been on the all-defensive team. Gary a, a miss, but it's tracked down by Dolajai. What a pass behind the back. Griffin to Gary a for the dunk. Well, if there were any hangover from the performance between these two teams before, it's not showing at all for Syracuse. They are playing very free to start this game. Well, Tony Bennett told us last night he thought his team played very well. Jim Beheim said, I don't think it was as bad as the score indicated. It was 81-58. Hoff scores on the second try and the foul. Jim Beheim said he felt his team got a lot of good looks at the basket in Charlottesville on January 25th. They just didn't shoot the ball very well for the game. The uh, Orange shot 37% and 21% from three. And that's the difference in being at the Dome and being, of course, on the road. Everyone thought that there was no home court advantage this year, but the familiarity of the setting plays a part and is doing so early in this game as we see Syracuse shooting the basketball much better than Virginia. Foul was on Buddy Beheim. Neither of these teams foul much. Beheim wide left, rebounded by Hauser. 
Their leading score at just under 16 a game, and he also gives them 6.8 rebounds per contest. The transfer from Marquette, Kihei Clark launches a three. Just his 18th of the year, he's 32% from behind the arc, and it's 9-7 orange, four and a half gone by. And oftentimes, K.A. Clark is reluctant to shoot the basketball from the perimeter, yet he's going to have to make some shots. Syracuse is going to try to make him the guy that scores in comparison to the big three. Clark Jr. from Woodland Hills, California. K.A. was honorable mention. All ACC this year. That's basically fourth team all conference. There are three teams and then the honorable mention squad. And Huff called for a travel. He stumbled as he leaned into Dolajai. And Buddy Behan picking up where he left off yesterday, taking advantage of the size over Reese Beekman, and then going back to where he was so special in yesterday's matchup, knocking down to three. But it's not just been just about Buddy. Alan Griffin to Quincy Gary, a beautiful find, beautiful finish, and the great reaction. Among Brought to you by New York Life, helping people act on their love for 175 years. Well, during some of the timeouts in the building, they show photos of famous alums of these schools. I kind of waited for a while. I'm, so, I'm still waiting. <laughs> I'm waiting for them to put my guy S. Dot on the screen. We've been waiting for that. <laughs> the President of the United States, a graduate of Syracuse University Law School. 9-7. Quincy Gary hit while shooting a three. Sam Hauser gesturing to Jamie Lucky that he got the ball, but Jamie says you got Quincy Garrier's arm. First foul on Hauser. Actually, it's Alan Griffin who he hit, pardon me. And that was a foul. I'm going to have to go agree with Jamie Lucky on that yeah. one. You see. Now, we talk about alums. You are Virginia. This is class true. Class of 95 with a degree in psychology, which helps you very much in broadcasting. So both teams represented in the booth here today. Are you, are you going to say broadcasting or just broadcasting with you? Which, which one uh, are we well, going with? You might be particularly correct <laughs> on the ladder. Okay. All right. Griffin wasting no time. Nothing but net on all three of them. And it's a five point lead for Syracuse. Joe Lenardi, as you saw in the graphic, has them in the NCAA tournament with a win today. Jim Beheim thinks they're going to be there anyway. Beekman not on the same page with Kihei Clark, and at least through nearly five and a half minutes, Virginia nowhere near as crisp on offense as it was in late January. JPJ. That was a game where Virginia had. 23 assists on 29 field goals, only 11 turnovers. But you see early in the game, Virginia playing with a little bit of rust coming into this one. The zone definitely affecting Virginia. We haven't seen as much Kihei Clark getting in the middle as he finds a spot in there now. Buddy Beheim was right up there on Hauser. Sean, you see no one rotating to Reese Beekman when he catches the basketball on the perimeter. There's one of your adjustments, right? We asked Coach Beheim last night, what would you do differently? I think they're willing to let Clark and Beekman shoot the ball, but not the others. That's really been the story of Virginia's second half of the ACC, trying to find other players to beat you outside of Huff Hauser and Trey Murphy. Virginia's three-game losing skid, teams did that very well. Alan Griffin, the block shot, and it was last touch by Beekman on the way out. Griffin, an excellent shot blocker, fifth in the ACC in the regular season with 1.8 per game. And you see Alan Griffin coming over, Reese Beekman not recognizing the defender behind him. And one of the things that Syracuse does so well, those guys who play the wings on the back line of the zone, they retreat to the basket to help cover it up as well as anyone when you consider Gary A and Griffin. Jayheim underneath. Gary A missed the little jump hook. Rebounded by Jay Huff. Fifth year senior, 7 1, 240 out of Durham, North Carolina. On the five man all defensive team. Thomas Wold a tensai off the bench and he buries a three. And the chess game has begun. That's the adjustment for Tony Bennett. Get Thomas Wold a tensai on the floor in comparison to Reese Beek. But now Kihei Clark has four shooters on the perimeter to take his options for finding that assist. Yeah, Wold a tensai, 43% from three point range for the year. Beheim blocked by Murphy. 
Beheim got nudged in the lower body. We talked about Kihei Clark and his ability to flash into the middle of that zone and then find shooters. As soon as Thomas Walter Tenside checks in, he's locked and loaded, knocks down the three. But Syracuse has to pay attention to Walter Tenzai, especially the way he can shoot the ball from the perimeter. First foul on Trey Murphy. Beheim made the first free throw. Leads the ACC in three point field goals made at 2.8, and that number is going up. He's made at least five threes in four of the last six games. When you start talking about threes in Syracuse, it's similar to Blocks and Ralph. No Terry one's a foul. Murphy, good lob pass there by Kihei Clark to set it up. But the screen allows Kihei to get into the painted area. And that's one of the ways, and of course, as a coach, you have to be so creative in how you play against the Syracuse zone because, of course, Jim Beheim has seen almost everything. He knows the ways to adjust when a team hurts him in one direction. And so Tony Bennett's adjustments is now to set the screen to allow Kia Clark get in the middle of that zone and still try to find his shooters or guys at the rim. Murphy, terrific free throw shooter, 92%. Doesn't have enough attempts to qualify. Generally lingers around the perimeter. Beheim couldn't get away from Murphy. Tony Bennett talked to us last night about how Murphy has improved defensively as the year's gone along. Gerard's three rims out. Hauser tipped it, but it wound up with Beheim. Robert Braswell into the game. Rattles home a three. He is an emerging force. He hit a big corner three yesterday off a tough pass and with the shot clock running out. And Jim Beheim said when he made that shot, I knew we were going to win the game. And 11 points for him yesterday in spelling Quincy Garrier, who was in foul trouble much of the first half. Big performance for Braswell. He's got off to a great start here today, as has Justin McCoy, who scored 14 points in his last three games of Virginia's had games where he hasn't even played this year. Buddy Beheim a three in transition. You know, and if your buddy Beheim now with a bigger defender on you, you're going to have to look for those opportunities. He can't take much time, especially when he gets it with the 6'8 Trey Murphy Garden. Well, the Tensai missed that three, and it goes over the backboard to Syracuse and takes us to immediate timeout. And he said, you know, I told my guys I took this job 12 years ago at Virginia for the chance at some title fights. And when we go into those fights, win or lose, just lay it out on the field, never yield. They certainly did that, giving them their fifth regular season ACC title. And he said, though, this year is different. It's made me so grateful. Everything they've gone through we will always remember it and probably put a mask on that trophy. Well, he's one of the great coaches in the country. Jim Beheim already in the Hall of Fame. Tony Bennett certainly will be someday. Dolajai, beautiful pass, and he's such a good passer as a big man. He fed Gary A, and the Syracuse lead is eight. And, and Dolajai can be dangerous in this game because of his ability to make plays not only in the middle of the Virginia defense, but also off the bounce. Difficult for Jay Huff to guard a guy like Dolajai. Nice offensive rebound by Justin McCoy. Then a dangerous pass, and it was picked off by Gerard. Beheim underneath for Braswell for the dunk. Timeout, Tony Bennett. And before we let it get too far away, we'll come back after the break and talk a little more about Tony Bennett's dancing. But it's Syracuse thinking about dancing right now. Syracuse singing the sh swing of the sugar right, right now, sharing it very well. Big 12. Kihei Clark fouled on the arm. And that's two on Buddy Beheim. Syracuse on a 7 nothing run. When we talked to Tony Bennett last night to get back to Allison's story, you gave him a hard time about his dance, and then he, he kind of got out of the scrum there and did the fist bump. But he said he got dizzy from bouncing up and down, jumping up and down in the middle of that celebration. Well, he said he's been there before. In a celebration, he got hot in the middle. He felt his temperature raising, so he knew it was best for him to get out of the scrum get away so he went Tiger Woods fist pump although it looked nothing like Tiger Woods fist pump it looked more like an attempted dance to me 
And Sean, I had to send in questions to my guy, the Wahoo voice, Dave Kane, to ask Tony what was that he was attempting to do there. They said he started to get a little lightheaded. But how about that number? You know, we talked about him being on his way to the Hall of Fame. He's just the third coach in the history of this conference, which dates back to 1953-54, to have 10 straight winning seasons in conference play. Dean Smith and Coach K. And when you look at really what has been the dominance of Virginia since, you know, 2013-2014, when they won their first ACC tournament under Tony Bennett, it's been unparalleled to any program in the ACC up to that point. And Tony has brought, you know, a special atmosphere to Charlottesville, not just because of the wins and losses on the basketball wow. court, but also the culture he's created within the program. Buddy Bayheim, as confident as one can be, it seems, shooting the ball. Huff made two free throws after the Braswell foul. Hauser, nice turnaround jumper from about 12 feet. You know, one of the things that Buddy Beheim is doing so well, he is scoring in the mid-range, and that opens up opportunities for him around the three-point line, but using his size to score over Casey Morsell, the only one he can't score. Oh! Robert Braswell at the rim. Beautiful feed by Joe Girard. I'm sure Coach Bennett won't like the fact that no pressure on Gerard allowing him to make that easy pass. But right now, Syracuse having its way offensively against what's normally a stingy Virginia defense. Well, the tenth side drives in the middle of that zone. It's a nice shot from just underneath the free throw line. Thomas Wool, the tenth side, senior from Italy. Great hands on defense by Beekman. Trying to beat Dolajai to the hoop. Huff crashes the boards and scores. and. Syracuse bench wanted a foul on Huff for going over the back. Jim Beheim upset. And Beheim also wanting a goaltending on that, grabbing the rim. Because Jay Huff actually did not have the basketball in hand to finish it through. He grabbed the rim and the ball just happened to go through the basket. Marcel defending Beheim now. They doubled him, and Dolajai became free as a result. Beekman fouled him, but saved the easy two for the native of Slovakia. Great defensive play by Reese Beekman getting out, but you see Jay Huff doesn't actually dunk this back in, but when he grabs the rim, that's why Jim Beheim wants the goaltending call for and, offensive and interference. Understandably so. Told the Jai, terrific free throw shooter, playing through injured fingers on his left hand. He made both. He's 84% for the year. Syracuse by eight. Virginia has not led in the game. Huff guarded by Dolajai. Huff drives. Strong move to the bucket by Jay Huff. And oftentimes against Syracuse, when you catch the basketball in the middle of the zone, you play one-on-one -on -one with the big. Jay Huff winning the battle against Dolajai in the last possession. Jadari Richmond, the freshman guard in for Syracuse. They're a little deeper late in the season with the emergence of Braswell and Jesse Edwards, who was terrific yesterday. Both Braswell and Edwards were. Garrier off the mark. Braswell will run it down. He wastes no time. Boy, is he confident. Sean, you talked about yesterday how streaky Braswell has been, but he's been very comfortable here thus far in the two games of the ACC tournament. Well, they've said all along he's a really good shooter. He started the year 0 for 12 from 3, and good for him to working his way out of it. Dolajai, Huff, spins to the bucket and gets fouled. And that's a great way to emphatically end the first half. Deuce McBride, a huge first half, 16 points. They're up six in that quarterfinal. Coach, Michigan State, Maryland, two 10 seeds, Joe Lenardi says. Yeah, two 10 seeds, very talented. Wiggins, straight line drive to the basket, strong finish at the rim, and he's gotten off to a good start to get his team good momentum and energy moving forward. Terps up four. S.CA, back to you. <laughs> No. All right, gentlemen, thank you. Jay Huff at the line makes the first of two. Now, I've got to throw it out to America, okay, because I've already S-dot. That's who you are to this point. However, 
you know, Sean Carter, Jay-Z, that's S. Dot. But there's also Sean P. Diddy, a.k.a. Puffy. Mm -hmm. You know, so I I'm going to give you the choice. Would you prefer to be S. Dot? Or... or or puffy, puffy mcdonough oh <laughs> puffy especially my age has a lot of connotations <laughs> <laughs> after the pandemic 15 pounds <laughs> we'll stick with s dot can, can i can we work on another one there's buddy Payheim. another three he's three for three from three he has 15 points in the first half remarkable run the first four conference tournament games in which he played including yesterday he had scored 79 points third in Syracuse history in your first four conference tournament games only Pearl Washington and Johnny Flynn scored more Pearl 83 and Johnny Flynn 84. Sean with that three Syracuse now has as many threes in the first 14 minutes of this game as they had the entire game in Charlottesville so the adjustments made also have to do with the fact that they're getting the shots they're just knocking them down as Buddy Beheim knocks down another big three and he is shooting the basketball with extreme confidence and by contrast in the game in Charlottesville he went one for seven from three-point range Dola Jai floats it up to the rim, hoping for a dunk from Gary A, who was fouled by Trey Murphy. But Buddy Beheim playing with this level is putting Virginia's defense in so much rotation. With two guys going with Buddy, he gets rid of the basketball into the hands of a great passer in Dolezal, who's able to make plays for everyone else. And right now, Virginia trying to find a way to respond, but unable to do so with Buddy on fire. Foul on Murphy was his second. He's gone to the bench, replaced by Justin McCoy. Syracuse and an excellent free throw shooting team on pace for the single season school record. Gary A made one out of two. They're 78.5 for the year. The only team better in the ACC, Virginia. 81.2, third in the nation. Behind Colorado and Oral Roberts, so if it comes down to free throws, you'd expect both sides to fare well. Hauser, quick three. McCoy got his hands on it. And again, Corey, the difference between the first game. A hurried three that time for Hauser. He had all night to load it up in that win in Charlottesville. And very well contested by Syracuse. Actually, two defenders to get in over there and opened up an opportunity for Justin McCoy to get offensive rebounds, just couldn't corral the basketball. Lob into Richmond. They were trying to post up Kihei Clark out to Gary A. He missed an open three. Jim Beheim said last night he was encouraged that lately Gary A had been making threes, and that opens up another point scoring avenue for the Orange. Hauser with Beheim on his hip managed to score. Under five to go in the half now. Largest lead was 11, as we mentioned a moment ago. Syracuse has not trailed. Dolajai screening again for Beheim. Gary off the roll. Shot clock at three. Dolajai needs to shoot. Didn't get it off. Good defense. McCoy at the end of that sequence for Virginia. And that's why Justin McCoy is in the game to help Virginia on the defensive end of the floor. As he checks out, Thomas Walter Tenzai checks back in and on the offensive end. But right now for Virginia on the offensive end, they're going to need for Sam Hauser to start hunting shots similar to the way he did against Louisville. T. Hay Clark, the bucket. He averages nine and a half per game. Sean, you know Jim Beheim much better than I. I believe that he will concede that shot. Mm -hmm. Again, oh, Key, yeah. Key Hay Clark in the middle of the zone, shooting over a six foot ten Marek Dolajai. I think Key Hay Clark will take that, and I'm sure he'll also take Kadarian Richmond coming in and giving them a boost on the offensive end. Richmond, the bucket, his scoring has tailed off a bit lately. 
In two points yesterday, played just 10 minutes. Coach Beheim was pleased with the way Gerard was going. Hauser with Richmond contesting. Dolajai from the corner, rebounded by Hauser. He played three seasons at Marquette. Between Virginia and Marquette combined 1,650 career points. That's reminiscent of the regular season game. Clark to Huff, and Huff fouled at the rim. That'll get us to the media timeout. Braswell the foul. That's his third. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by SoFi. Get your money right. Up on the Audi halftime report, the Big 12 tournament is underway. Seven of the eight teams in the quarterfinal are ranked. We've got an update from there. Obviously, the big news of the day, Duke out season over due to a COVID issue. But in this game, Syracuse taking advantage of an opportunity here. They are. Virginia needs to get the ball to the middle of the zone. Keyhart Clark has to be more aggressive, more assertive, catching the basketball, shooting the basketball, and facilitating to open things up. Yeah, I agree with everything you said about Virginia, but I, to your point about Syracuse, how about a 77% assist to made field goal ratio right now? They are doing an outstanding job of slicing up Virginia at the defensive end. Two shooting 52% from the field. Sean, CA, back to you. All right, gentlemen, thank you. Yeah, that was the big factor in that first game. Kihei Clark, Syracuse done a good job making the adjustment. Today, Huff the three-point play, three minutes to go on the half. Syracuse by six. Beheim, double team, nice bounce pass. Jesse Edwards just into the game, missed the dunk, his first attempt. Nice find from Buddy Beheim, who's gonna be surrounded by two white jerseys every time he catches the basketball. Edwards just unable to finish, and Edwards now with his hands full having to deal with Jay Huff on the baseline. Hauser with the length of Edwards guarding him. Edwards nearly seven feet tall. Will the tenth side. Good job to save it. After he missed a three, Clark will tee one up. And Edwards fouled by Huff during the rebounding action. First foul on Huff and the fifth team fouled against Virginia. Well, Dallin just mentioned it, the big news of the day, Duke, after a positive test in their program after the win last night against Louisville, has ended its season. So Florida State advances to the semifinals, and they'll play the winner of the game tonight, Virginia Tech and North Carolina. Tomorrow night, Eastern time, that Virginia Tech-North Carolina game has been moved up a half an hour as a result of the cancellation of the Duke game. So that'll start at 8.30 Eastern time on ESPN. Two minutes to go on the half. Allison, you have more on the Duke situation? Well, certainly concerned for the Duke player that tested positive, but also for the Louisville team. But I can tell you that all of their tests from last night came back negative. They were rapid tests. And remember, the ACC uses a technology called Connexon, which basically tracks how long a person is exposed to another person. And through that tracking technology, they're confident that they will not experience any sort of contact tracing that would affect the Louisville team. They are tested daily and are on a have to have the requisite consecutive days of negative tests necessary to compete in the NCAA tournament. All of these teams now are being tested daily. Remember, we talked to Tony Bennett last night around 6 p.m. He was on his way to get his test. Hauser a three. And Virginia tightening this up considerably as we approach the half. It's a three-point game with 117 to go. And Hauser, the three, his first after he had seven in their regular season win against the Cuse. Well, Virginia starts on the defensive end. They were able to get stops and then Reese Beekman with the nice baseline drive, baseline drift to Sam Hauser in the corner, knocking down the three. But when you look at this game thus far, Syracuse with 39 points in the first half. Virginia normally gives up 60 points per game. That's where the difference has been in this game early is defensively for Virginia. They can score with anyone, but to this point, they haven't been able to get stops against the Orange. 60 points per game allowed fifth in the country in scoring defense Virginia and that's become an annual staple 
at the top of the nation in scoring defense only Loyola of Chicago Houston Liberty and San Diego State allowing fewer points per game and Hauser happy to finally have an open look one of the few times today Jim Beheim's defense wasn't there. Edwards goes back out after a brief stint. Interesting that Alan Griffin who's back in the game now has played very little just seven minutes. It's not because of foul trouble. He doesn't have a foul. He tried to shoot there. Hauser was defending. One minute to go in the half in this ACC tournament quarterfinal. First to four, now three games today. Dolajai in the huff, the shot blocker, and it rolled off. Controlled by McCoy, who's done good work on the boards. Justin McCoy, part of Tony Bennett's extension of the bench where he started to play more guys at the end of the season. Hauser had a pretty good look there too and that one popped out. About three seconds difference between the game clock and the shot clock so Syracuse can take it a long way down. Syracuse 0 for their last five field goals. A bucket here would do them a lot of good as far as their momentum heading into the halftime locker room. Beheim guarded by Beekman and Jamie Lucky has a foul on Beekman which will be the sixth Virginia foul. Well, neither team reached the limit in the half unless there's another foul before these final 10 seconds expire. Two fouls on Reese Beekman shot clock off Beheim tough shot now time for Virginia. Hauser, long three, almost tied it at the break. So the number one seed, Virginia, trailing throughout, down by as many as 11, has rallied to get within three. Buddy Beheim went a bit early on that one, giving Virginia opportunity. Sam Howard's, Hauser just unable to knock it down. Beheim at 15, Jay Huff 13 and eight rebounds for Virginia at the half Syracuse by three to the studio we go once again Dallin Danny and Sean gentlemen thank you Mr. McDonough this is the Audi halftime report and the Big 12 tournament is underway seven ranked teams of the eight playing in the quarterfinals we start off with Oklahoma State taking on WVU OK State Kate Cunningham triple Sean yeah good job spacing the floor Kate Cunningham being involved active in the first half he had 10 points in the first half turnovers though have been the issue though for Oklahoma State layup goes Sean McNeil and crew a little frustrated they're down eight but they came back now UV I mean, WVU up four miles of private steel terrific anticipation mm. and great finish going into halftime with big momentum and big juice off that defensive play. WVU up five. That game tipped 11:30 Eastern time. Underway in the second half. Sean Farnham, Danny Manning, myself, Dallin Cuff. Uh, that's a big game. We focus on all the games all day long. But the big news of the day is Duke uh, positive COVID test. That news broke around 10:30 Eastern time this Back in transition, getting that defense set so they can utilize that ball pressure, which they're so good at. Buddy Beheim, the miss. Largest lead was 37-26. Syracuse had 10 assists on 13 field goals. In the first half, they jumped out to a 7 nothing lead. Tough pass. Beekman managed to rescue it from Hauser. Same five that started the game starts the second half for Tony Bennett, and Huff fouled as he tried to drive. Dolajai in his customary place on the floor. He played the entire 20 minutes, did Marek Dolajai in the first half, and Hauser did the same for UVA. And you see the left knee of Jay Huff going into the left knee of Marek Dolajai, but the interior inside of Dolajai's knee, he's going to feel that a lot more than Jay Huff in that collision. And it's his first foul. He had been foul prone late in the season. He's up on Huff. Hauser with. Griffin racing out to contest Quincy Garrier the rebound. There is the second leading rebounder in the ACC in the regular season with nine per game right behind Justin Champagny of Pitt. They double Joe Girard. Griffin got Murphy in the air. Murphy forced him into a two which Griffin missed. Griffin had just three points in the first half on three free throws. He was fouled shooting a three. 
Dolajai there to contest the Murphy shot. Huff kept it alive for UVA. That's the, just the advantage of being seven foot one over six foot six on that back line. Jay Huff can't gather the basketball, but can tip it back out to one of his teammates. Kihei Clark, Reese Beekman, Trey Murphy for the tie, and Virginia has gotten to even after going behind by 11 in the first half. That's what makes Virginia so dangerous to guard when you have Murphy as well as Hauser and Huff, their ability to shoot the three, it spaces the floor so very well. Gerard, a quick hitter. So the Syracuse offense, which went scoreless for nearly the final four minutes of the first half, remains cold to open the second half. Hauser with Gerard late getting there. Sam Hauser gives Virginia its first lead. And a timeout called by Jim Beheim. The way Virginia has won all season long has been from beyond the three point arc. Kihei Clark finding Trey Murphy in the corner is able to knock it down and then ball movement. Sam Hauser getting it back, hunting his shots, not passing up good looks, and knocking it down back-to-back -back threes for the Hoos as they take a lead. 28th time more than any other city. Virginia on a 16-2 run. Syracuse now more than six minutes without scoring. And has cooled off considerably after a hot start. They've also not been as active defensively, and Virginia getting some better looks at the bucket. Shot clock at five. Beheim can't get away from Beekman. Tough shot. He made it. So after more than six minutes without scoring, Syracuse back within one, and Beheim's up to 17 points. And I have to admit to being thoroughly oppressed with the way Buddy Beheim has grown as a basketball player, not just a shooter anymore, especially when you see he has to go into his dribble movement to create his own shots. The behind the back, great footwork to pull up and use that 6'6 size over a smaller defender to get a necessary bucket for the orange. T.A. Clark has it back from Beekman. Murphy. T.A. Clark. You do wonder, second game in as many days with a short rotation about fatigue for Syracuse. Murphy barely grazed the front rim. Robert Braswell double figures off the bench for the second straight day. He had 10 in the first half on four out of four shooting. Clark takes it away, all the way. There's my... All ACC defensive team member Kihei Clark getting the ball, getting the job done. The best on ball defender in the ACC. Did he make up with the Goldwire family, though? Uh, well, we we, 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 we got to talk. Come off the, uh... yeah, 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 Courtney Goldwire, Jordan's dad's a little upset with me, but I still love him. Still, just can't be all ACC first team defensive team when you play on a bad defensive team. Gary A. fouled. Kihei Clark did a great job on Carly Jones Saturday in the game they had to have to win the regular season title. Held the all-conference player to six points on Talk two out of 15 shooting. Talking about Buddy's ball handling, but Kihei got them cookies getting out in transition. The easy bucket for Kihei Clark. Already a bunch of tickets punched. There won't be any tickets punched today. Jim Beheim hoping that Unofficially, they could punch a ticket with a win over Virginia. You'd have to think they would be into the field of 68 with a win today. Virginia is certainly going to go to the NCAA tournament. Quincy Garrier, the free throw shooter. Jay Huff, the foul right before the break, his second. Here is today's bracketology with Syracuse winning yesterday, Xavier losing to Butler. Joey Brackets moves Syracuse into the last four in and moves Xavier out. Garrier missed both. And it's still a three-point lead for UVA. 
But the problem being that last team on the last four in, you got to watch out for the bid stealers. Mm -hmm. And someone out of a conference steals a bid that wasn't supposed to be there. All of a sudden, that knocks the orange out. They would love to be able to get a win today to solidify themselves in the field. Hey, hey Clark, unlucky that shot went around the rim for a long time. Gary A working on Hauser, nicely done by the sophomore from Montreal. Third team all Big East this year. You got Big East on the brain. You think it's no, Syracuse? AC, I mean, you know, it's been in the ACC for all these years, and I still say it every now and then. Understood. Beekman missed a three. He didn't shoot many. 26%. Beheim. And Syracuse goes back on top. And it's another 20 plus point game for Buddy Beheim. Double figures in nine in a row, 20 plus in three of those. But that goes back to Allison's point when she talked to Virginia at halftime is simply about getting back in transition and identifying the hot guy. Ooh, heat check there. A short change, Buddy. Double, uh, 20 plus now in five of the last seven games for the junior from Fayetteville, New York. Buddy patting his chest. A little bit of a heat check. Mm -hmm. Couldn't turn it down. He I played 37 minutes yesterday. Really just came out at the end after he shot those three threes in a row to try to get to a career high 30 points. Missed them all and then they came out wide open. Hauser. Braswell reacted late. But that's an adjustment that Syracuse has made in this game because of the shooters where Syracuse's back line defenders on that zone are normally collapsing back in. They have stayed out against Virginia. This time they forgot about the fact that the guy under the basket happens to be a first team all ECC performer this year. And Sam Hauser, nice find from Jay Huff, but doesn't take much to find Hauser under the basket for the easy one. Dolajai looked around wondering where the help was, it appeared. The last foul was on Hauser, his second. So we're under 14 minutes to go in this ACC tournament quarterfinal. First of three games here today. There were to be four, but if you're just tuning in, Duke has ended its season after a positive COVID test in its program after last night's win against Louisville. So they will not be playing Florida State tonight. Florida State moves along to the semifinal. So a triple by for the Seminoles. Last year's regular season champs. Joe Girard a three. Syracuse by three. Now the first bucket of the game for Girard. Now one out of five from the field, one out of four from three. But you did that subconsciously. You said triple by. And so, of course, Joe was thinking you had to be talking about him. He knocks down the three at the top of the key. Well, the Tensai answers with Braswell trying to get out there. High level game. Girard trying to make it back to back. Barely got the front rim. Girard, a standout quarterback in high school in Glens Falls, New York. Won state championships in basketball and football in high school. Hauser again alone in the middle of that defense. And putting Jay Huff in the middle of the zone put Syracuse in the bind with those back line guys against the zone. Who do you leave? Do you allow the corner shooters to have a look or do you take away Sam Hauser? We've seen adjustments back and forth by both these coaches and Tony Bennett's adjustment has definitely helped his offense here in the second half. And Huff's been terrific. Another double double second in as many games against the Orange this year. And now he blocks Gerard's shot and only three on the clock for Syracuse. But by flashing Jay Huff to the middle, now when you look at the baseline, you've got Walter Tenzai, three-point shooter on one side. Trey Murphy, three-point shooter on the other side. Do you not allow one of those guys to get a shot and let Sam Hauser have an easy layup? It puts a tough position. It puts Syracuse backline defenders in a very tough position right there who they defend. They need a shot. Tough one by Dolajai. Hits the side of the backboard and is a shot clock violation. Oh. 
We came on air today talking about how dangerous Kihei Clark was in the middle of the zone offensively for Virginia. In the second half, it's been about Jay Huff. Good ball movement. Huff passed it out for an open three by Murphy. He couldn't make it. Bayheim, Gary A, 15 to shoot. He drives on Hauser and got fouled by Hauser, and that's number three on the senior from Stevens Point, Wisconsin. Terrific action in our first game of the day. Buddy Bayheim, reason to smile, 20 for the Orange. September. And Jay said it's really helped him through this season. He knew with the isolation required during this COVID-19 pandemic that he would really not have a lot of interaction and being able to come home to Lindsay every day and not just have to see his teammates day in and day out said he said really helped him mentally uh, through the grind of this season. They had a beautiful wedding just outside of Charlottesville. Not many in attendance. Coach Bennett said he was there though on Zoom. Corey, apparently they didn't have your address. Uh, no, I did not get the invitation from Jay. I didn't get the Zoom invite either, which really isn't that difficult to do. So bring Good anticipation up. by Gerard. Gary made one out of two free throws after he missed his first three of the game. Now one for four. Virginia by one, 11.20 to go. In a high level game here at the ACC. Gerard, after it was kept alive, and Gary got upended and there's going to be a Virginia foul I believe on Justin McCoy Justin McCoy having to deal with one of the best offensive rebounders in the ACC in Quincy Garrier and Garrier stays in attack mode and because of that keeps possession for Syracuse new 20 on the shot clock first foul on McCoy fourth on the team Virginia among the teams that fouls the least in the country they call for 12.9 fouls per game, third fewest in the nation. Gary A. Richmond there for the offensive rebound, couldn't corral it. And the other two teams that foul less frequently per game are Miami and Notre Dame. So the top three, all in the ACC. A double huff. Quick ball movement. Kihei Clark will try it and make it. Nothing but net for Kihei Clark, who had only two points in each of their previous two games against Miami and Louisville, was two out of 11 combined from the field. But he's given them 10 points today. And a four-point lead, their largest. Bayheim took his eye off the ball on the catch, and it's a Syracuse turnover. Sean, we watched Kia Clark knock down the three on the last possession. He's such a better shooter when he's not thinking about whether he should take the shot. When he's hesitant, his percentage is very low. And the ball moving briskly. He's not hesitant there. Just a little short. And Garrier the board, his eighth. Dolajai underneath. Garrier lays it in. Watching Marek Dolajai pass the basketball is a thing of beauty. Mm -hmm. you, you can see his eyes. He's looking at all the different options he has to deliver the basketball. Ends up making the tougher pass to the only guy who could finish it off with Garrier underneath the basket. Dolajai has four assists today. Clark. Will to Tensai for three. That one popped out and kept alive by Huff. Sam Hauser on the bench with three fouls for Coach Bennett. Under nine minutes to go now, and McCoy's pass. A little too low and hot to handle for Jay Huff. Dolezal catching the basketball off the screen, and you see he's surveying the floor and with Jay Huff running with his head turned, doesn't see it. And then Kihei Clark, no hesitation, stepping up, knocking down the three. Much better shooter when he's not thinking about whether he should be taking the shot. 
Derrier looks like he wants to work on McCoy, and he banks it home. And they're even again at 54 with 8.40 to go here in Greensboro. Virginia trying to double team Gary when he gets his opportunities. However, the double team not getting there fast enough. The strength of Gary being able to go through two players. Certainly not Virginia's best offensive lineup without Hauser out there. Huff, nice pass. McCoy fouled by Braswell. Or is it going the other way? It's going the other way. And Tony Bennett apoplectic all the way out near midcourt to argue with Tony Henderson. Oh, you went apoplectic on me. Okay. You see Jay Huff. What's the foul? The nice drive. It's the offensive foul on Gary. Wow. As Gary steps in, but Gary does leave his feet. Well, it's three fouls on Huff, so that's a huge call. And at the other end now, McCoy quite physical on Garrier, and that had the Syracuse bench in a bit of an uproar. And I believe Jay Huff, as we see on the other end of the floor, as Garrier leaves his feet, he becomes vertical defender. And I'm no referee, but when he leaves his feet and becomes vertical, I don't think that's all any uh, an offensive foul. I believe that's a play on just verticality at that point. The foul most recent was on Gary A, his second. Just the second team foul on Syracuse in the half. Virginia called for five. They were under eight to go. Beekman, nice crisp pass into McCoy. Seven to shoot. Thomas will the tenth side. Batted out by Huff. And Beekman, Syracuse fans on that side thought he was out of bounds. I believe the Syracuse fans had a better look at it than Jamie Lucky did on that possession. However, now Jamie Lucky stopped the game and is heading to the table. And unfortunately, both sides have started to become a little focused on the officiating. Apparently, they're going to take a look at this again. Looked like he's in. He's he was in. in. He won against this team last week. He had 15 in the second half of this one, really offering a secondary option for the Cowboys. But down, late game execution, tough. Yeah, not good. Not what Bob Huggins drew up. There were a lot of dribbling. They had about 16 seconds to get a shot off. They're down three. They don't even get one off. McNeil shot goes. But after the buzzer, congratulations to Mike Boyton. Back to Sean and CA. Boy, Oklahoma State playing very well heading toward the NCAA tournament. A bit of a dud here at the end of the year heading toward the tournament for the Mountaineers. Apparently the issue is with the shot clock, which is why the action was stopped. They set it to 23 out of the timeout for Virginia. A long three by Murphy wouldn't go. Tied at 54. 7.15 to go. Virginia trying to advance the semifinals of the ACC tournament for the sixth time in the last seven years. Syracuse trying to get a win that would almost certainly cement its spot in the field in the NCAA tournament. Braswell hot from three, not that time. All alone for the rebound. Gary A dumped it off Jolajai. And Syracuse has the lead again. We talked about Garrier's prowess on the offensive glass. Another opportunity for him to regain possession for Syracuse. And then a nice pass to dump it off to Dolajai. Dolajai, Braswell tries another. He's in there. And one of the stories of the game to me, Corey, is Alan Griffin. You know, a key factor all season long, and he's played just 11 minutes today. Not aware of anything physically wrong with him. Blocking foul called on Gary A as Murphy tried to drive the baseline. And that's three on Quincy Gary A, who has fouled out four times this year. Gary A sliding his feet, does a great job closing out, running Trey Murphy, the shooter, off the line, but still moving. 
and Murphy does not extend that forearm, which keeps him away from getting the offensive foul. He inbounded right underneath the bucket, and Hauser fouled both Dolajai and Braswell there. It's Braswell called for the foul from behind, and that's his fourth. So you wonder if that would trigger the return of Griffin. And it looks like it will. Coach Beheim has just summoned Alan Griffin. Hauser makes the free throw. You know, sometimes with the complexities of zone defense, if you don't do what you're supposed to do, the coach will have you sit near him. That's just a guess. <laughs> the, the, the same applies in the pack line. So I understand mm -hmm. exactly where, where you're going with that one. And I believe that could very well be the case with Alan Griffin in this one thus far. But you now back in the lineup, an opportunity to have his imprint on this game throughout the final 548. Hauser's free throws have tied it again. 5.43. Go block shot by Murphy. Just rejected Allen Griffin. I don't believe that's going to help him as Braswell goes back to the scorer's table. When you consider the fact that Griffin has sat so long, in the first play you come in, you try to take a shot. And it's a bad shot. You may not be on the floor much longer. Hauser for the lead. Yes. You could just tell on the catch. She was perfectly in rhythm. And on target with the shot. All of a sudden, he's up to 19 points. But getting it done on both ends of the floor. Trey Murphy standing his ground. The block shot on Allen Griffin. And then by design, Reese Beekman drives the baseline, never looking to shoot, but knowing Sam Hauser will have his back. And Sam Hauser, the ACC's leading three-point shooter, knocks down another. 44.4% for the year coming in to lead the conference. Three out of ten today. 20 points is one point away for him. And if he gets there, it'll be the sixth time this year he's reached 20-plus. Well, coming up next... Our second quarterfinal of the day, and here come the Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets. The number four seed, they'll take on Miami. Jim Laranega's team. Time for a magical run. They've already won twice here. They had to play on Tuesday in the first round. The bottom six teams all in action in the first round. They beat Pitt. And then they knocked off Clemson yesterday. How much will they have in the tank to take on a talented Georgia Tech team featuring Moses Wright, the player of the year in the ACC? Five minutes to go. A lot of traffic around Richmond. Gary A open way off with the three snatched by a Richmond Bayheim tees one up and Syracuse has tied it and Bayheim has 23 is fifth three point field goal of the game and he's made at least five now in five of his last seven second chance points the great offensive rebound by Kadari Richmond finding Buddy Bayheim wide open no defense guards that very well. Reese Beekman, strong drive, couldn't finish. Bodies tangled up behind Dolajai. Little pick and roll. Gary A blocked by Huff. Huff held his ground. Coach Bay, I wanted a foul. One of the great shot blockers in Virginia history. And quite a transformation. You you talked to her about in the pack line defense for Tony Bennett. If you don't defend, you don't play. And early in the year, that was the rap on Jay Huff. He's always had these offensive skills. But he didn't play a lot. Of course, some of it was waiting behind very talented players. But uh, he improved all the way to be on the all-defensive team in the conference. And Murphy's three gives the Hoos a three-point edge with three and a half to go. In the second time in the last four possessions where Virginia blocked, on the defensive end led to a three on the other side of the floor and Virginia surviving beyond the three point line right now. Buddy Beheim. Huff by the way four block shots today 
to go with his 13 points and 11 rebounds. Three minutes to go. Virginia by one. Murphy out of the corner. Three with Dolajai lunging at him. Four-point lead, largest of the game for Virginia. Trying to match up on the back line against Virginia with all the shooters on the floor is extremely difficult and also try to take away Jay Huff under the basket. Syracuse struggling to do that here over the last few possessions. Verrier tried to feed Braswell on a backdoor cut and it didn't get through. And Virginia in no hurry now, approaching two minutes to go for the four-point lead. Hauser off the curl. Sam Hauser. Another 20-point game. He has 21, 20-plus 20 for the sixth time this year. He matches the 21 he had against the Orange in the regular season game, and Jim Beheim calls timeout. His team now on the ropes, down six with 1.55 to go. 14 points in the second half for Sam Hauser. ACC Network Basketball is brought to you by New York Life, helping people act on their love for 100 and... CA, back to you. All right, gentlemen, thank you. Here we have a minute 55 to go, Virginia with its largest lead. Six point advantage. Syracuse ball out of the timeout with Richmond, Dolajai, Bayheim, Garrier, and Braswell. Griffin still on the bench. Bayheim, tough shot, driving left. And Syracuse brings some pressure now. And it works. Richmond deflected Beekman's pass. Richmond lobs it up. And Garrier the dunk. And Sean, I will tell you as a UVA alum, you've seen this before, and it, it is frightening when you watch this and Syracuse going into this zone against Virginia, I mean the pressure against Virginia. Very nearly had another steal. And now it's Dolajai called for a foul as Murphy went to the rim. Out of the timeout, Buddy Behan taking it upon his own shoulders to go get a bucket. By, by getting a bucket, they set up the full court pressure, Virginia turning it over. And if you're a Wahoo fan, you've seen this before. Virginia has struggled with Syracuse full court pressure in Chicago in the Elite Eight game. The last time. Double digit lead in the second half. Syracuse threw the press on, wound up winning. And that was the last time we left the ACC tournament wondering if Syracuse would get in. Many people thought they would not. They end up going to the Final Four by beating Virginia in the Elite Eight that year in Chicago. And almost had another steal. Murphy. Almost automatic from the free throw line. 92% for the year. Nothing but net with those two. Four for four from the stripe today. Four point game, 113 to go. And Beekman called for holding Beheim as he was trying to cut to the ball. Three fouls on Reese Beekman and six on Virginia. Syracuse called for five. And another whistle before the ball was even inbounded, it seemed. And for a team that doesn't foul much, now you give a big time shooter an opportunity to go put points on the board at the free throw line as Trey Murphy tries to fight through the screen. And that's his third, and it's a one and one for Buddy Beheim who made the first. But a big foul, he, now it's a one possession game and Buddy can get it to two as he does, knocking this down. And he has been spectacular here, tying his career high now in the ACC tournament. They had 29 in their regular season win against Notre Dame as they rallied from 20 back. Again, the press causing a problem for the Hoos. Hauser couldn't get it in. And it's a Virginia timeout with 1.10 to go. Jim Beheim keeps saying we're not a very good pressing team, but it's been effective today. Coming up on Selection Sunday at 7 on ESPN in the app, it's Bracketology with Reese Davis, Jay Billis, LaFonso Ellis, Seth Greenberg, and Vicki B.
They'll break down the back brackets and have special guests. Sports Center starts it off at 5:15. As Reese and the guys reveal the NCAA men's field of 68 as the teams are announced. 29 points, by the way, for Buddy Beheim, the most ever by a Syracuse player in the ACC tournament. They've been a conference member since 2013-14. Frank Howard had 28 points in an ACC tournament game against Duke in 2019. And Sean, you said Coach Beheim says they're not a very good pressing team, but Virginia as a team does not handle pressure very well in the full court. Tony Bennett knew Jim Beheim had this in his back pocket for this situation. They sent Huff deep. He's got some room near the bucket. Of course, Syracuse didn't have to press there. Now they made it a one possession game. One minute to go. Virginia by two. The winner advances to tomorrow's semifinal to meet the winner of the game to come next between Georgia Tech and Miami. Eight to shoot. Hauser, Murphy had to launch an awkward shot. It's an air ball. Huff, that's a shot clock violation as Huff fed Kihei Clark. And give Quincy Gary a credit. He blocked that shot of Trey Murphy. That's the reason why I didn't get to the rim. Otherwise, that would have been a new possession for Jay Huff. And you see he gets a hand on that basketball. That's enough to throw off the shot. And because it doesn't touch the rim, it's a shot clock violation in comparison to being what, what maybe would have been an offensive rebound. And they're at the monitor. I don't know why. You know, it's pretty clearly a shot clock violation. It never hit rim. Syracuse never had possession. Gives the two coaches a free timeout. You see, once again, Gary gets out and just the touch of the basketball throwing off that shot. Now, now why did they go to the monitor there? I mean, that's <laughs> as clear as it can be, right? <laughs> I mean, it, what is even close about this? It, it, there and, was, and now you give the teams a chance to, and both, it's fair to both teams, but still, play on. The teams want to talk, make them use one of their timeouts. Virginia by two, 30 seconds to go. Could this be the 30 seconds that determine Syracuse's fate in the tournament? Bayheim called a little bump as he started to drive. And now they've started to call it tightly on the Virginia defensive end. And that's four fouls on Trey Murphy. And a one and one for Bayheim. His dad takes everybody out of the lane as he's done regularly. It's the first career 30 point game for Buddy Bayheim. And those who question whether he just got a scholarship because his dad is the coach can probably stop asking that question. <laughs> I think they should have stopped asking that after his freshman season, but hey, people like to keep things alive every so often. Tied at 69, shot clock off. They keep the pressure on, and Hauser can't get it in again, leaving the Hoos with one timeout. But, Sean, even though Syracuse doesn't need to press, the fact that they show the pressure forces Virginia to call a timeout that they may need later in this game. So great. I mean, we've talked about the chess move all day for these two coaches and a great move there by Jim Behan, who is out of timeouts. And he's expressing some displeasure to Burt Jones, uh, Burt Smith. Here's the Pac-12 brackets. Oregon, Arizona State, UCLA, Oregon State, Colorado, California, USC, and Utah, the games today. And we'll have action on ESPN at 11.30 tonight, Eastern time. Colorado, a tournament team against Cal. Cal, upset win over Stanford. And that great rivalry. So there's the situation. Syracuse with a foul to give. Virginia the only timeout. The arrow points for Syracuse. And with the foul to give, I would expect for Syracuse to play this down, allow Virginia to get into their front court. 
But once they get probably below 10 seconds, take that foul, make them take it out of bounds and have to draw up something different in order to get the basketball inbounds against Syracuse pressure and try to come up with the steal. Once again, Garrier guarding Hauser, the inbounder. <laughs> 25 seconds to go, shot clock off. You see Buddy Beheim look over to Coach Beheim and, and ask the question, we have one to give, will they use it? And undoubtedly was discussed in the last time out, and they do. Richmond clearly intended to foul Kihei Clark. In perfect timing, under 10 seconds, you take away the offensive rhythm of Virginia, and now you put a little more pressure on Virginia throwing this basketball in. Next one is the bonus. Virginia with a chance for the last shot to win it. Kihei Clark. Beekman for the win, got it! Reese Beekman, the freshman, with just his ninth three-pointer of the year, 26% for the season, three-point shooter. But they didn't have any time left. He had to shoot it, and he did. And he beat the buzzer. And Virginia wins in a thriller, 72 to 69, to advance to the semifinals for the sixth time in the last seven ACC tournaments. A disconsolate and emotional Syracuse team walking off. They will now have to wait till Selection Sunday for their fate. And Corey, we talk a lot about the eye test. I admit to my bias, but to me, they've passed the eye test. I it's agree. a very good basketball team that played a top 15 team in the country to the wire. I agree with you wholeheartedly. I believe that Syracuse has played its way into the NCAA tournament. And we said at the beginning of the game, they were going to make someone else beat them. Reese Beekman, Kia Clark, and it was Kia Clark to Reese Beekman, who beats the Orange on the buzzer beater. Sam Hauser not been able to get free. And Kia Clark, we've talked about his ability to find his teammates, the consummate point guard, finding Reese Beekman wide open, who knocks down the three for the game winner. Oh, a thrilling ending to an outstanding basketball game in our first quarterfinal.